Hey guys, welcome back to the follow-up episode of picking up the 750S finally from Elite Finish and it's fully pay protected now. That means it's time to put on the running in miles of 625 miles, which means today I had to find somewhere to go. So right now I'm heading to the biggest weekly cars and coffee event on the West Coast. So I'm gonna turn in right now, turn on the rear wing again. It shot up. <laughs> I have barely 80 miles on this vehicle, but this is a big event for tons of McLaren. So hopefully a good showing came out. It was gonna rain, but now it's not. So thankfully everything looks good. Car is nice and shiny with the PPF and the ceramic coating turning in and uh, here we go. Okay, this is it. We have made it to the car event. It's been a ritual of taking every one of my new cars here from the GT500. Even we did the first ride along, world's first ride along in a C8 Corvette when they unveiled it and we rode with Chevrolet we parked right over there. That was so much fun a couple of years ago. Unfortunately, the sun is not out quite yet, so you can't really see most of the, of the uh, flakes all over the paint job, but the blue really does actually come out. This is going to be the ending point for the 7 Series McLaren and I think the design itself is going to stay pretty timeless. Okay guys, this is it. We're leaving the Cars and Coffee event. My good friend Carl is driving a, a manufacturer 750S press car right here in front of us. So we're going to join him and go to the uh, canyon. He's able to lower that top unlike us. But I got this one because we can get a roll cage for the track. So all together, it should be uh, pretty pretty good for going fast and staying in place. But let's leave this event. There's so many people right now. Such a great showing. Major thank you to everyone who walked up to me to check out the car. I, I love being you guys watching the channel. And uh, coming out here was just fantastic. But uh, wow, look, look how good around us. Oh, how's it going, dude? Good, good. This car looks insane. Thank you. I really appreciate it, man. When do you get to a follow behind? Another McLaren, like a 750S right here in front of me. There he is. <laughs> got his wing down there. You got to flex with the wing up. That's a great spec. Look at the blue. I think it's called Tanzanite blue with orange accents all over the wheels and the brakes. It looks incredible. But I'm so happy you're driving with Carl. He's such a good guy. Check out his stuff on uh, Forbes.com. He's been a journalist for quite a while now. Okay guys, this is it. Finally made it to a curvy road and uh, let's just have some fun spirited driving the 750 get a feel for it. Now the press car I had, well look at him, he's going for it. Whoa! See I don't want to really go fast because if they're lane splitting on motorcycles that would be not safe. I just want to get comfortable with this car. It's my first time really getting a feel for it in the corners and uh, we don't have the most aggressive tires on it right now but it should be totally fine for us getting close to a summer day like this. Let me go ahead and turn on the arrow. What I'm noticing with this car is just all the performance I loved out of the 765 LT with a higher pitched exhaust system and then the usability with the amenities of a 720. It just comes together, it comes together like a full car. But my 600 kind of felt kit car-ish at times because it was very raw and didn't have carpet. This is not like that. This is insane, guys. I love how the orange is coming together. The sun is reflecting off the metallic flakes, even with the steering wheel. And wow, I'm noticing that as well. Not only when I brake is the wing shooting up, but whenever I upshift in sport mode, it's giving me a whiplash. Whoa, <laughs> it's got the LT wings on each upshift, yes. And here we have it, just made it to a good lookout point on this mountain range. I mean, look down, look at the view all around us. You can almost see the ocean. Uh, yeah, yeah, you can. Straight that way, you'll see how the land just stops, right? And that is where the ocean is. 
looking straight down. I can't believe how high up we are. What do you think of that paint job, guys? The flakes are everywhere. There we go. Look at the flakes reflecting on every panel that's orange, even to the blue louvers. I think having this MSO build of a one-of-one -one spec with the blue on the louvers, even with the brake calipers, it makes walking up to this car every time uh, as an occasion. This is it. We have the 750S parked right next to Carl's brand new delivery, right? 750. <laughs> well, I like it. Delivery to my house. Uh, I know it was great treatment from McLaren. They brought this car right. I didn't even have to go to a dealer. The bummer <laughs> is they're going to come back to my house in two days and take it away. Yes. So that's kind of sad. But uh, yes, I did get this car for the weekend. Happened to be timed when someone else was getting their very similar car. I know, right? It couldn't have worked out better. And here we are on uh, the top of the mountain with some great views, some, some sunlight where it's already I think raining up in LA and um, some great drives because the roads here are good for driving. I feel pretty awkward about this. I have a matching orange jacket and I know you don't have a matching like shirt but your bandana matches the car. Was yeah, that planned? Yeah, you know, we, we, you got to think ahead on these things. No, it was actually, <laughs> I've used this for like a years. And uh, so here we go. Someone at McLaren apparently planned better than me. Oh, me gosh. Car. I love the spec on this. Do you mind if you show it to me real quickly? Yeah. So it's a convertible painted louvers. I, I, I prefer the contrast. I know. I like the contrast louvers, but I do like the Tanzanite. This is called Tanzanite Blue. I thought it was purple. I couldn't figure out what color it was. It was gray, uh, cloudy when they dropped it off. I'm like, is this thing purple like my demon? But no, it's it's a tanzanite blue. It's It's got a nice, you know, uh, sparkle fleck in it, you know, a little pearl effect. Oh, yeah. And then it's got the great seats that uh, are in your car. I love that. When I saw those, I was quite happy. And it is a convertible. So, you know, this top retracts pretty fast. You can do it with the key fob when you're not even, even near the car. Love that, putting it up and down. Uh, and, it, and, it, and it costs you... 109 pounds, which I'm a purist, so I theoretically want the lightest car possible, but that's an awfully good retractable top weight. I don't know how I would get one of these without those seats because yes. the car inspires you to drive it in a way that you are going to generate a lot of lateral G. That's and if right you didn't here. have these seats to secure you, it'd be much more of a pain to enjoy the car while, you know, putting your knees all break, you know, oh, your yes. knees on the center the funnel <laughs> and the kick panel. It's yeah. like, please don't let me slide. Oh, so gosh. I love the seats because they're comfortable, but I also love them because they make the car capable and com and confident to do what it's supposed to do. You've got all the exposed carbon fiber everywhere. I think that's pricey. How, how much was this build? Um, Glad I didn't buy the car because it would have cost me a lot of money. But the uh, spec sheet, the uh, Monroney sticker, puts it at $468,000 for this particular uh, really? 750S. <laughs> so I didn't get all the exposed carbon fiber with mine, but I did all the custom MSO stuff. So I like the theme, the livery that I ended up getting. But I think overall, I'm going to share with you my analogy of the vehicle coming out here. Because I, I can't go to the red line yet. I want to, but I'm breaking it in. It, it seems like... Supercars like this are a dying breed nowadays because yeah. even like walking to the front, it physically, they look, let's say long, but they're not bloated, right? Super wide and fat and tall. Yeah. They, they're this, lightweight this thing looks supercars. Lean. This car looks lean. Yes. Which is cool because it is lean. It doesn't weigh much. What's flying by? Motorcycle. With curb weight, it's just about 3,000 pounds. And I think when you look at the 296 GTB, that weighs hundreds of pounds more, right? It's mid 3000s and SF90s, even more than that. I was just going to say, everything tire. weighs hundreds of pounds. Tell yeah. me the other car. Tell me the non McLaren car that weighs close to these cars. A Miata? <laughs> but that'll be less. Oh, yeah. Seriously. <laughs> you got a V8 in this, though, right? You have active aero. So that's why I personally got it. And I just feel like what I'm learning with the vehicle out here is that even compared to my time with driving the 765 out here, they're crazy fast cars. But what I find is that this is a very approachable vehicle. And, and I've talked with Carl for many years about how a vehicle can have an insane amount of capability for a lap time, but it might feel too edgy to get there. Let's say Corvette Z06 or ZR1 C7 on the track. Yes. Fast times, but it might be edgy. And I remember, you know, this goes back a ways, but like the, the Ferrari 360 and 430 okay. from the early to mid 2000s and all, the 430 was a big jump from the 360. The 360 got real hairy at its, at its edge and they fixed that largely with the 460. That's why a lot of people like it. And then the 458, I love that car, last naturally aspirated V8 Ferrari. That car was kind of the ultimate, that was the peak for me for that car. Light, approachable, uh -huh. and really a great drivetrain. 
I haven't been real thrilled since then between the 10 turbo V8s and now they're starting to put multiple drivetrains in there and, and they're getting heavy. So, but, but that's what you want. Like you said, if you can't get out of a car what it's theoretically capable of, all that theory means nothing to you. And I've talked for years about how the Mustang GT350R, anyone who's driven that car aggressively knows that's one of the most approachable performance cars oh, yeah, I loved you it. will ever drive. You've, you, you, you've experienced it. And so that car I can drive everything it's worth and everything it's capable of doing, I can get there. A lot of cars more capable than that car. I'll never go faster in those cars than a 350R because I'm not going to try to get there. It's too you risky. You nailed it. So in summary then, the bandwidth that you have of getting 20 mpg on the road, relaxing with the hydraulic suspension, it's just super comfortable. But then coming out here and being able to drive like you would in those LT models, yet it just feels so approachable. When you polish something out like this, it becomes truly best of both worlds, in, in my opinion. You know I'm a huge Porsche 911 Turbo S fan, enough of a fan that I, I spent my money, just like you just spent yours, I just spent my money uh, less than a year ago on a 911 Turbo S at 9972, which I think is peak 911. Again, uh -huh. smaller, shorter wheelbase, narrower, lighter, and uh, really uh, intuitive car to drive fast. This is the first car really, probably since I got that car and since I knew about the 9972 Turbos, where I'm like, man, you get, you basically, you get another, all, do everything car for 600 pounds lighter. You know, you're going to pay. I, I had to pay a pretty penny because I got mine with 1,951 miles on it. So, but you're going to pay a pretty penny, but you're going to get the same kind of level of driving across the country in comfort, driving a track and set lap records Yep. with 600 pounds less weight to pull around in the, the 750S. So it's another one of those cars where if you put all the things you want a car to do around a circle, mm -hmm. and then you got to like grade each of those things and you're trying to make the circle as filled in as possible 911 turbo s great car at that. oh yeah 750s great do you want to go to the drag strip nine second quarter mile half mile 170 miles an hour or so i think they will hit or 160 i'll have to test it out but anyways much faster than my 600 lt and then more approachable i think driving at the limit and faster at the tracks. Just take all that, take all the numbers away, which a lot of people, especially the ones who never get near these cars, that you know, they call it shop by spreadsheet. You know, it's yeah, like, this car's faster in zero to sixty in that car. That's the take away the shop by spreadsheet thing. Yeah, fun, right, Austin? There let's you go. just talk about. Let's act like you don't know what lap time you're pulling, and you'll never get to find out. All you get to know is what the car's doing and what your what sensations you're receiving as you sure. drive it. This car is amazing. This car steps right up there. You know, it's way more capable than a 350R, but both those cars talk to you. My 05 yep. Ford GT, my 2005 Ford GT, car talked to you really good. I want cars that talk to me and, and, and tell me great stories while I'm driving them aggressively. Mm -hmm. One of the best ones out there. And then when you have a hydraulic steering system where you're actually feeling the steering. Ugh. I have so many complaints with a lot of cars, the electronic steering racks. They just feel too Play-Doh, I don't know. But, but like you're saying, the driving experience to become one with the car, and it's not only fun for you in the driver's seat, but whoever's in the passenger seat with you, or what's even more fun, I think, to see is reactions, especially from young people. So, mm -hmm. you know, wearing this McLaren shirt, I'm seeing a lot of people wearing McLaren nowadays. With Formula <laughs> One, they're doing good again. And uh, young kids, about young kids want to check out this car. I even saw with Carl, the attention we're getting, it's it's a very much of a younger crowd than the Corvette that I used to have. And uh, like it's the just Ferraris fun. and the Lamborghinis, you know, I, I told you, I, I think there's literally an age cutoff around 40 <laughs> to 45 where you feel like you have to have one of these storied European brands and McLarens are too new and young and all that. And, you know, for a while I kind of got that, you know, I mean, they've been making cars for over 10 years now since the MP4C and the P1 and all. But if you drive them and you, and you experience the, the driving characteristics and then you start recording the lap times and the acceleration times, you're like, okay, so in, on every measurable level and non-measurable fun behind the wheel, they're better than a lot of these storied brands. They weigh less, they talk to you better, and they're just as comfortable. So why would I not feel like this car is more worthy than a lot of these storied brands that have been around for 50, 80, 100 years? Because I've got hangups and I'm not capable <laughs> of appreciating a younger exotic brand. But, yeah. but it, like Austin is saying, that's our problem or old people's problem. Under pe people under 40 that don't care about that, they just care about how car cool the car looks and how yes. well it's executed, they love these. Thank you very much, Carl, for uh, taking the time to talk to me on camera. Check out his story. He's a writer for Forbes.com. He's a very popular automotive journalist. You probably know who he is. Um, I'll, I'll uh, link his uh, info in the description down below. 
But uh, I think it's just time to get back inside the cars, man, and yeah. enjoy the rest of the I'm, day. I'm hearing all this internal combustion go by. We got to get out there. Yes, yes. <laughs> hey, guys, if you enjoyed this video, hey, please hit the like button. It really helped me out. And subscribe for much more great content coming out your way. Hit the notification bell so you're up to date on all the new videos coming out. I'll see you in the next video. And hopefully, a break-in period is finally over so I can go full throttle and hit the red line.